know, more costly it is for the government, obviously, uh, but being funded, as Bobby said, by many of the taxes that are being proposed. The problem is this. Neither party in Washington has demonstrated an ability to kick down costs. Neither party has. Uh, so you then enter a situation where you're going to have a very unsustainable situation unless you take some drastic steps. Uh, and drastic steps being some, uh, some decisions being made in Washington about how care is delivered. But let me go to uh, some slides and, and just try, and let me try and relate to you where I think we can start from and actually accomplish some reform and bridge some differences. Number one, I believe you ought to start with three guarantees. Uh, you ought to start, number one, by saying you will not have a system where the government takes over the decision making between a patient and his or her doctor. That can't be because we can't have the kind of quality all of us become used to. Number two, you can have a government program uh, like I was just trying to outline where you have that many more people in it and the government's only way of controlling costs is by denying access to care based on any number of things. And we've seen in instances in the UK and other systems where that care is being denied based on age or gender. You can't have that. And thirdly, you can't have um, a government plan that's going to break the bank. We've seen that. It'll, it'll alter our way of life altogether. So this HR 3200, these are just some examples. In the bill, Bobby says you can, uh, the bill says, and it does say, you can keep your plan if you have it. Well, the, the devil's in the details, because in the bill, we list here, individual health insurance. If you have an individual policy, if you're in that market, the bill basically says the government is going to deem what is acceptable and not in terms of individual coverage, and in fact, uh, will end up saying that the kind of coverage you have won't be able to exist because that insurer won't be able to enroll any more people once this bill goes into effect. Medicare Advantage, you see that in Virginia almost uh, the, over 133,000 seniors have chosen Medicare Advantage. And all of you who are on Medicare that may happen to be on Medicare Advantage know uh, that you opt for that plan because it is an alternative to government care and it is a, a program put in place by Congress to allow you to access private insurance. Uh, that too will be the result of the chopping block where Bobby has indicated some of the savings will occur for Medicare cuts. 133,000 uh, uh, seniors will no longer have that choice. Health savings account, something that I've been very, very focused on. It's not the answer for everybody, but it certainly helps people have another affordable option for care. It is the health savings account coupled with a catastrophic plan so that no one has to go bankrupt uh, by their health care costs. That will be outlawed uh, by this plan. We proffered an amendment in Committee Ways and Means, and they wouldn't accept it because it says, no, we know what Washington should be providing as far as health care concerns, it's not health savings accounts. Uh, again, the, uh, these are examples of mandates uh, of where the uh, government steps in uh, to determine what it is that health care should be. Just a, a visual picture of the new 50-some agencies created under HR 3200. Uh, in the middle is the Health Choices Administration. This is where all the action will be. This is where the individual will and the agency will be opining as to what is an acceptable benefit plan for all of us in Washington for the rest of the country. Uh, again, the, the way that we, we can get into this a little bit more, if you like, the cost, uh, comparative effectiveness research uh, that will be employed by the government to try and bring down costs. Uh, these are examples of survival rates in, in public systems. You can see very quickly breast cancer, prostate, um, all of the five-year cancer survival for the U.S. versus the EU, we are significantly higher on every one of those uh, because of what we've got in our system versus what they have in theirs. Um, uh, again, breaking the bank, this just shows you, Bobby says the president represented the bill as deficit neutral. The Congressional Budget Office says H.R. 3200 adds $239 billion to the deficit over the first 10 years. And lastly, potential areas for agreement. Again, going back to the assumptions we agree on, it's unsustainable. We can agree we need to work on the issue of portability. You shouldn't be able to lose, you shouldn't have to lose your health care if you lose your job. Number two, we should not have an instance where someone is denied insurance coverage because of a pre-existing condition. 
their universal access, access program proposals on both sides of the aisle, we ought to be able to get that done. And lastly, meaningful medical liability reform. It is time for us, and this is coming as a lawyer, time for us to get the lawyers out of the business of frivolous litigation and allow for health care costs to stabilize. With that, Tom, I thank you. Because of the fire marshal laws, we worked out a way to get the speakers up here in a number system. If you haven't gotten a number to speak, please go in the back. You'll get one, and a representative of the time dispatch will start calling out numbers for those of those who signed up in advance. So normally we have people uh, uh, lined up. It's just very uncomfortable. We're going to a different given the packed house. Yeah, we'll try to move. The